It's time for Recipe of the Day. A couple of months ago, I was at Whole Foods and I saw something in the freezer aisle called a shrimp burger. I was intrigued. The picture looked like something kind of crispy and fried, but what I was right away imagining was more like a crab cake that had shrimp instead of crab that you then put into a burger bun. And the one at Whole Foods said that it was a creel shrimp burger, and so I really wanted to have that kind of like creel flavor going on too. So that is what we have here. It's kind of like a crab cake made out of shrimp, has a creel mayonnaise. You put it in a bun with some lettuce. There is so much shrimp flavor. I made them last week for the third time and I ate one and a half of them for dinner. Like I couldn't stop after the first one. That's how good they are. Okay, the main questions you might have for this is what kind of shrimp to use. You're using one pound of shrimp for four burger patties and it doesn't really matter what size shrimp you have because we're going by weight and they're going to be kind of pureed and chopped up. Both actually pureed and chopped up. You'll see what I mean in a moment. You wouldn't want to use like canned shrimp for this because those are too wet. You definitely want to buy your shrimp probably frozen from the fish section. I talk about this all the time that the shrimp are frozen on the boat and they stay frozen until they get to the grocery store. And so getting them frozen and bringing them home is the freshest way to get them. You're going to thaw them and I will link to how to thaw them. If you instead buy the fresh shrimp at the fishmonger, like at the fish counter there, what they've actually done is they've taken the bag of frozen shrimp and they've thawed it there. And so it's actually fresher if you bring it home frozen and thought yourself that if you buy the ones that they thought, you don't know when they thawed them. It might have been earlier today. It might have even been yesterday. So get the frozen ones, thaw them. Doesn't matter what size they are. You just want them to be peeled and deveined and to not have the tail on. The other question I think you might have about this is why there is no egg in it. There's no egg in the shrimp burger recipe, and that is because I tested it with and without the egg. And what happened was when I added the egg, I needed to add extra breadcrumbs for the burgers to hold together, and that made less of the shrimp flavor come through. The actual shrimp puree that I'm going to be talking about kind of works like a binder the way that an egg would, so you don't end up needing the egg, and the less breadcrumbs means lots of great shrimp flavor all the way through every bite. So those are the important things about this recipe. Next, let's talk about how you make these babies. In a small nonstick skillet, you're heating a tablespoon of butter until it melts over medium heat, and then you're adding a chopped up red bell pepper and half of a medium onion minced up into there. Just stir until they're softened and just starting to brown about six minutes. And I will say I tested this without sauteing the vegetables first, and I tested it without the vegetables at all, and this was the best way. The lightly sauteed vegetables were better than raw, and having them was better than not having them. So do this extra step. You're going to be happy about it. Okay, while that's happening, you're going to take half of your shrimp and you're going to put them into a food processor. Or if your blender is really high powered and can handle it, you could do a blender instead. So they're going in there with half a teaspoon of salt and you're pureeing that on high until you have this white, fluffy, smooth paste. You're going to want to scrape the sides of your food processor down every now and then just to make sure that all of it is getting mixed in there. It's just going to take a moment. You're going to have this fluffy white shrimp paste. I know that sounds weird, but don't worry about it. It's really, really good once it's cooked. Then you're going to take the other half of your shrimp and you're going to chop those into one quarter inch pieces. Put your chopped up shrimp into a big bowl with that shrimp puree and also those sauteed vegetables. You're also going in with half a cup of plain breadcrumbs and one tablespoon of Creole seasoning, or you can use Old Bay seasoning if you'd like. And you can buy either of those seasoning blends, or I will also link to homemade versions in the show notes. So if you don't have them on hand, you can whip up a small batch. My seasoning blend recipes always have the amounts for like a big batch if you want to make some to put in like your whole spice jar, but also it has the recipe for just making like two tablespoons. So you can just make the little bit that you need to make this recipe from those seasoning blend recipes on the cookful. I'll link to them for you in the show notes. No worries. So in that bowl, you have your shrimp paste, your chopped shrimp, your sauteed vegetables, your breadcrumbs, the tablespoon of the Creole or Old Bay, and you're also adding in a tablespoon of mayonnaise. Now give that a stir just to combine, and then you form them into four patties that are about an inch thick, and we're going to cook them right away. And I'm just going to say again that that shrimp paste does really act like a great binder in this recipe. So often you need to let patties rest for a bit before you cook them so that they all kind of like firm up and settle in with this one you don't need to. And the amazing thing, like as you cook them, you're going to see the shrimp as it's cooking, it does like solidify in this really nice, soft, pleasant way that's holding everything together. It's really brilliant. 
So you're going to get a large nonstick skillet over medium heat, and you're going to just put a little bit of oil in the bottom just to cover the bottom, and you're adding all four of those shrimp burger patties into there. Cover the pan and cook for about six minutes, and you'll just need to adjust the heat here and there to make sure they're not burning. You want them to really cook for those six minutes and get a little brown on the bottom. Then flip them over and continue cooking until they're golden brown on the underside and until the burgers register 160 degrees Fahrenheit on an instant read thermometer. Put a thermometer into one of those burgers and check. It's going to be about six to eight minutes more. While those patties are cooking, you can get the rest of the stuff ready for your burgers. You know me, I love to toast a burger bun, so I do that often on a sheet pan under the broiler in my oven. They only take like a moment to start browning, so keep your eye on them. What I would do is turn the broiler on at this point and get the buns opened and open side up on the sheet pan. And then when those shrimp burgers come out of the skillet, that's when you put those buns in there and then they're going to just toast and then you can assemble your burger. But get them ready on the sheet pan and you're going to make your Creole mayonnaise. It's a half cup of mayonnaise with one tablespoon of that Creole seasoning or the Old Bay mixed in. And these burgers also are going to have some lettuce. I'm going with romaine lettuce. You can do whatever kind of lettuce you would like. Get your lettuce ready while those shrimp burgers are cooking as well. Then it is time to assemble. Get those toasted buns out and you're going to put some lettuce on the bottom bun. You're going to top that with a shrimp burger patty and then spread about two tablespoons of the Creole mayonnaise on the top of the bun and put that on top of your shrimp patty. Do that with all the shrimp burger patties and buns and dig in for an amazingly delicious shrimp burger for dinner tonight. I'll put the link to this recipe in the show notes for this podcast episode or you can head to cookthestory.com slash R-O-T-D and get it there. And if you are loving this podcast, I have a special favor to ask of you. Could you please leave a rating and a comment wherever you listen to this podcast? Not all platforms have space for rating the comments, but if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you could for sure do it there. Spotify also. And if you tell a cooking friend that you have about this podcast, I would appreciate that too. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all new chicken cookbook, and from this podcast, Recipe of of the day. Let's get cooking.